Welcome to the Weird and Wicked podcast. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And we're two sisters with a passion for the mysterious and the unknown. On our podcast, we will explore killer cases and the most puzzling phenomena. Come with us down the rabbit hole where we'll take a magnifying glass to the most bizarre, unnerving, and unbelievable stories. From true crime and conspiracy theories to ghosts and cryptids, we'll cover it all. Today, I have for you guys a bit of a history lesson. Get ready, because today we will be talking about the history behind the haunted house. At first, it was a mystery to both you guys and Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I messed filmed, that up. <laughs> or we we thought we were filming about half of the episode, <laughs> and then we realized we weren't. So the be- the first half of it is not a mystery to Rachel, but yeah. it will be to you guys. The second half will be both of you. <laughs> so I am literally heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it would be a good day. I had the idea yesterday to do an episode like this where one of us does research and tells the other about the whole story story, so we can get, like, some reactions and stuff. And that way, like, we're reacting along with you guys Mm -hmm. some of the time. All right. So just a little bit of a disclaimer before we start. It's not going to be that bad of an episode, but just in case. This episode contains brief mentions of execution and death. It is intended for mature audiences only. These stories are recounted from a number of sources that are listed in the show notes. Our discussion on this podcast is based solely on our own research and conclusions. Listener discretion is advised. So we all know and love a good haunted house. Theme parks Mm -hmm. all over the country set up their own versions around Halloween to treat guests to a pleasantly terrifying experience. I mean, what could be better than walking blindly into a dark building, (laughs) strobe lights flashing, with literal strangers dressed up in horror costumes and makeup jumping out at you from all angles? (laughs) Right. What could be better than that? (laughs) Here in Florida, the most popular haunted houses can be found at Universal Studios. It's called Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. Um, And typically there will be a few different haunted houses with their own themes. So people visiting the park can like pick their poison or try them all, which a lot of diehard people who go to these, they do go to all of them. They have to. (laughs) (laughs) They make it a point to go to all of them. And not only Halloween Horror Nights, but also... The Busch Gardens Park um, does Hello, Hello Scream, Scream, which I've also been to. Popular one, yeah. Like I told you before <laughs> when yes, we were the... recording, yeah. I hated it so much. Like it was so much fun. Don't get me wrong, but people were like all up in your business, like with the chainsaws and the shovels. Yeah, and you're walking through the haunted house, and there's like wet, like feet touching you like I went through through this one and it was like a butcher house or something and there were like feet and hands hanging down like dangling oh my gosh yeah Yeah, I'm not so sure that I would like that experience I have personally never been to any of these haunted houses like none of the theme park ones at least when I was Mm -hmm. younger I used to go to it was like the Calusa nature and that was always so much fun with friends because it was actually pretty scary because you're walking through the woods yeah and there's like swamp nearby it's already scary yeah Yeah, it's weird because me and Kristen love ghosts and we love all things creepy but not our cup of tea these haunted houses I'm not a huge fan of random people jumping out to scare me (laughs) I'm with you so as you have probably seen, it is it has even become a trend among talk show hosts and their guests making for some great content. But where did the idea for haunted houses come from? Who began the tradition and why? These are all questions that Kristen was asking herself <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> last night at midnight. <laughs> yes. And of course, we all ask each other around Halloween. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so basically last night at like 11 o'clock, I had the idea to do this story. Like I saw, I actually Googled, I was I was trying to find ideas for actual hauntings because we wanted to do like, I wanted to do a ghost episode or something. Mm-hmm. So I Googled haunted houses just to see like what would come up and the history of haunted houses came up and I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to do this. Perfect way to start it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, But the stories that I found behind haunted houses were actually so interesting. And that's why I decided to do an entire episode on it. I love it. So the very beginning of haunted houses actually started with something not totally predictable. Um, It wasn't just like some person set up a scary house or a scary walk that kids could go through no it was actually marie tussauds wax museum and wax figures that got the ball rolling for interesting houses yeah you'd never think yeah and the first museum she ever had was really something um basically she had a full exhibition of wax sculptures that closely resembled french figures like king louis the 16th and marie antoinette People who saw the exhibition described the sculptures as being so remarkably accurate in the features of each person's face, which in that time, you can imagine people have never seen something like that in their entire life. So they were probably a little freaked out, a little amazed. Like, yeah, I could I can only imagine. Yeah, today it's even crazy. Like the they call it the Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. I don't. Mm-hmm. Know, there's probably a ton of them, but there's one in Orlando. And right. whenever people go there, like this is insane. Like I feel like I'm standing next to the person. How did she make them look so accurate? You might ask. Well, during the French Revolution, she was spared from execution after agreeing to make death masks of any famous people who died by the guillotine. One of these famous people was Maximilien de Robespierre. I don't know how to say that. It is said that after his execution, Marie picked his head up from the basket and sculpted the likeness. She took the original with her when she went back to London in 1802, and from there, copies were made. Okay, what what a freaking badass. (laughs) Like, Also, how do you make that deal where you don't have to be executed? Like, how did that go up? I know. I'll make wax figures for you if you don't execute me. I wonder why it was... I wonder why they wanted wax figures of yeah. people. Just to, like, remember them by? Or it was, It's a little confusing to me, but... Very interesting job, though. Yeah, exactly. She was able to stay alive. So yeah. <laughs> That's always I good. Good for her, Yeah. <laughs> After creating a decent collection of these sculptures, Marie opened her exhibition permanently in London and named it the Chamber of Horrors, which some people still call the wax museums to this day. Specifically because it's a little bit freaky. (laughs) There's so many of them. (laughs) And they're all like wax figures of celebrities or like (laughs) celebrities who've passed. I think there's one... I'm sure there's one of Michael Jackson. There's got to be. There's got to be like Elvis. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. It's got to be weird. Mm -hmm. Yet another contributor to haunted houses as we know them was, of course, you guessed it, French theater. Not not really. really. (laughs) You probably didn't guess that. No, I don't think anyone could guess that. (laughs) Well, a theater in Paris oftentimes would have macabre themes. Did I say that right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Shows would include depictions of graphic dismemberment. Hmm. Max Mori, the theater's director, even stated at one point he, quote, judged each performance by the number of people who passed out in the audience. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Very interesting (laughs) way to judge the performance. I love how people just chose to go to these, yet they're like passing out from disgust. The first House of Horrors popped up in Lip Hook, however. It was probably the first true form of a commercial horror attraction. It was then that people began to crave more experiences like these. More and more houses like this one popped up all over the globe. It became a form of recreation for the most daring and brave individuals. That's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) And later, it would become a solution to an ongoing problem as well. 
Yes. By the 1930s, around the time of the Great Depression, American parents were fed up with the mischief and trickery that would ensue every Halloween night by young kids, especially teenage boys. Basically, these kids would run havoc on the entire town. Of course. Um, Some sources said that they would, like, some kids would steal fence gates and put them high up in the trees. Um, Some kids would trash gardens. And then one source was talking about how at one point there were a group of kids who kind of made a fake body by stuffing straw in these sacks and connecting them. Um, And they put this fake body on train tracks to stop a train. Dude, that's insane. (laughs) You can imagine how big of an issue this caused. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just one night a year. Just absolute craziness. (laughs) So obviously it was a night run by kids. Parents needed a way to get their kids out of trouble. And basically, cities were desperate, and what they came up with was essentially bribery, or what we now call trick-or-treating. If kids went door-to-door in their neighborhoods, they would get free candy. Who doesn't want some free candy? I know, right? (laughs) And of course, this is in the Great Depression, so kids were probably like, hell yeah, free candy. I need need some candy. I'm sold. And it worked. Some homeowners took it a step further and made the earliest form of the modern haunted house. They would decorate their basements with all kinds of spooky decorations in which kids would walk through for a good scare and a piece of candy. And then they would be on their way to the next house to do the same thing again. (laughs) To the basement. I can't believe that. (laughs) So funny. Yeah. I love it because it's probably like also one of the first times that people were actually like decorating with spooky decorations True. on Halloween like decorating their oh houses and stuff yeah so this was like only the beginning mm-hmm. in fact a 1937 party pamphlet even described to parents how to make a trail of terror for their kids in the yard the pamphlets instructed quote an outside entrance leads to a rendezvous with ghosts and witches in the cellar or attic Hang old fur, strips of raw liver on walls, where one feels his way to dark steps. Weird moans and howls come from dark corners. Damp sponges and hair nets hung from the ceiling touch his face. Doorways are blockaded so that guests must crawl through a long, dark tunnel. At the end, (laughs) yeah, it's it goes on. I love it. (laughs) At the end, he hears a plaintive meow and sees a black cardboard cat outlined in luminous paint. Nice. (laughs) Which is so funny because when I was reading this, it made it reminded me of Radium Girls because of the luminous paint. The luminous paint. (laughs) Oh my my gosh. We're back to the luminous paint. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh man, that's. I wonder if it was actually that luminous paint. I mean, this was. The 1930s, so yeah, I just love how detailed this whole instruction. Like it's like a yeah. guide, on how, a guide on how to make kids scared of your house. Like, <laughs> I love like, it. It's pretty like graphic too. I know. Oh my Very god! Like just weird moans and howls yeah. come from star corners. Like, Dude, oh god! I I just Very love it. Interesting. Yep. So the haunted house as we know it today, the the true modern house, however, oh, the true, <laughs> the true modern, <laughs> the true modern haunted house, however, didn't really become popular until Walt Disney brought it to life in the Disneyland Park. Oh my God, yes. His take on the haunted house drew inspiration from the Evergreen House and Winchester Mystery House. The Evergreen House is a huge mansion built in the 19th century and now functions as both a museum and a library. There's nothing, honestly, there's not that much interesting about this house. It's just Mm. really big. It has a bowling alley, a gymnasium. It has a billiards room. And the guy who owned it, I guess, added those wings to it when he lived there. Oh, okay. Um, So there's nothing scary about that house. It's just like, maybe there's some ghosts there because it's it's an older house. Um, But the Winchester Mystery House is a little bit more interesting. Um, And you might remember this from some of the (gasps) 
the BuzzFeed or that one BuzzFeed yes. Unsolved episode. I just clicked in my head, I think. Yeah. It's is a popular house. Um it's a home originally owned by Sarah Winchester, the widow of William Wirt Winchester. Uh the longest home renovation, people often called it. Because of her inheritance of the Winchester repeating arms fortune, it is believed that Sarah was haunted by the spirits of those who died by the gun that won the West. Sarah allegedly never stopped building and adding random additions to the home in order allegedly to confuse the spirits that haunted her. Some say that the spirits forced her to never stop building until finally she passed in 1922. The home is now complete with Get this, 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 160 rooms, 52 skylights, 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 (sighs) chimneys, it goes on and on, 13 bathrooms and 6 kitchens. Nice, because one needs all of that. Yeah, and it's all because she felt like she could not stop building. She had to keep. She had to keep going. doing renovations. And I need to know the square footage. The I'm very curious. I'll tell you, the entire home is twenty four thousand square feet. Oh twenty four thousand. My apartment is like twelve hundred. <laughs> like, I think our house is a little over two thousand. <laughs> 24,000. That's oh insane. And if you look up pictures of this house, you can tell just by seeing it that there's it's a mess. It's wild. It looks beautiful, but it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, there's doorways leading outdoors, like two-story building, like a two-story section that just goes down. Yeah, just leading to a drop. Yeah, or like stairs that don't lead anywhere or like secret doors mm-hmm. and shit like that too. Very interesting. We have to go there. Mhm. I've always wanted to visit that place. And another interesting thing is there's 47 fireplaces but only 17 chimneys. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't that didn't 30 of those fireplaces don't have chimneys. <laughs> That's a little They better dangerous. not be used. <laughs> I know. And how do you know which one has it? Like, I guess you'd have to look and make yeah. sure there's a chimney, but. That is it's just, just wild. <laughs> oh, and also, at the time, the price tag for this house was $5 million. In today's money, that's equivalent to $71 million. Oh my God. That's how much it's worth. Where Even is it though again? it's a mess, that's how much yeah. it's worth. Um, I want to say. Is it California? I think it's in California somewhere. It's got to be. Sure. Winchester. Mansion. $70 million. I'm sure the story behind it make, made the value go up too. It's in San Jose, California. Okay. We're going. Yeah, I'm sure this story. I mean, it was owned by the widow of William Winchester, the guy that that literally invented the Winchester repeater. Mm-hmm. And like I said before, people dubbed this gun as the gun that won the West, pretty much. But that's why she felt haunted because she had inherited all those all deaths me from the family business, but. The family business is what caused the deaths of countless people. So. I can't blame her. I know. Yeah. I would probably go conflicting. crazy too. Yeah. Especially like living alone. She was a widower mm-hmm. or a widow and living alone in a giant house. I'm yeah. sure she wasn't all by herself, but still with mm-hmm. no husband. And I don't think that, that they had kids, right? Mm-mm. I think it was just her, but I could be wrong about that. I didn't look too far into her. Mm-hmm. So Disney took inspiration from these two homes, and after two decades from the time that he approved of the attraction, um, it finally opened. Its main feature is a 90-foot-long ballroom sequence complete with dancing ghouls at a birthday party. And if you don't know what this attraction is, it's literally called Haunted Mansion, I think. Um, Mm, The Haunted Mansion. (laughs) The Haunted Mansion, yeah. (laughs) Not only was the attraction sensational, and I mean sensational, as in Mm -hmm. in a single day after lunch, 82,000 people walked through it. Oh, my Uh, God. Yeah. But it was also revolutionary. 
Disney utilized state-of-the-art scare technology, as I would call it. Ghosts yes. no longer were just a hanging white sheet or, like, kidney or, like, liver, whatever, you know, hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. It didn't have to be that gross anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> they were complex illusions formed by reflected re- refracted light. This light was projected to make ghost-like images. And what's more, these images could move, speak, and sing. I guess that's what made it so popular is not on, like not only was it a haunted mansion that you could walk through, but it was mm-hmm. like the technology behind it was insane. I oh, I can yeah. only imagine being one of the first people to walk through to that. go through it. I would see be that amazed for like, real. <laughs> that's a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> So from then on, haunted houses became part of the culture. Some organizations would run their own versions of a haunted house to raise money, for example. It became popular for theme parks and farms to host their own Halloween haunted house events, which blew up so much that it became a several week long event for some of them. Even evangelical Christians made their own anti-Halloween attraction, which were specifically designed to show people the consequences for sinning. (laughs) So basically, they were making these haunted houses or haunted walks where they would, like, show people the devil and, like, they would have, like imagery of like hell and stuff like that. Jeez. Basically, the the message was if you sin you're going to hell. You're going <laughs> and to hell. It, would, it was like meant to bring people into the church. Okay, like save your soul right now. Yeah. <laughs> Join and the so, church. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Repent your sins. <laughs> <laughs> Among these introduced by Liberty University and Jerry Falwell in 1972 was one of the first hell houses. Um, like I said before, it was the same thing. They just... It was designed to scare people into coming back towards the church. And it literally worked. One year (laughs) around 2015, 27,000 guests attended today's version of the Hell House called Scaremare. 4,000 of those people supposedly responded to the gospel. (laughs) Oh my God. Yes. I would have never guessed that much. Out of 27, th- oh, I can't speak now. Out of 27,000 people, 4,000 still responded to it. So, like, That's it doesn't, a- I mean, it's a lot of people. It doesn't seem like a lot compared to 27,000, but it's a lot. As Hollywood began to embrace the slasher genre with movies like Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th, the haunted house industry continued to boom. Of oh my course. God, yeah. This is how the movie-themed houses began. Um, And you can imagine how popular those got. Oh, yeah. Still. I know. Crazy popular. And now they do it on shows, too. Like, they did did the Stranger Things. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. It wasn't always fun in games, though. In 1984, a fire broke out in a haunted house at an amusement park in Jackson, New Jersey. Eight people were killed and seven were injured as a result of the incident. After this, stronger safety regulations were put in place for haunted houses and walks. And as advertisements grew to be a bigger and bigger part of these attractions, volunteer-based attractions struggled. It was an um, impossible competition. Thus, professional haunted houses erupted. So throughout 2014, approximately 2,700 haunted houses were operated. The industry as a whole is worth 300 million dollars according to an nbc report which is insane yeah wow the amount of people that want to be scared (laughs) it's just so mind-boggling crazy (laughs) i get it because i love that stuff too i love the thrill and like the adrenaline rush that you get Mm -hmm. um it's just like watching a horror movie and stuff like that you know yeah so today we know the industry has evolved even further There are now zombie runs, escape rooms, and other fright games. So whatever kind of scare you're craving, there's always going to be an attraction to satisfy it. (laughs) So yeah, and that's the story behind the haunted house. (laughs) I loved researching this kind of a topic because it's something that I'm personally super interested in and I knew you would be too. (laughs) Yep. Um, 
I like doing this kind of an episode where it's a little bit lighter, heart, lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Switch um, it up. Yeah. So I hope we can do more. Yeah. If we can get our recording <laughs> right, <laughs> know. we can do the mystery. We where need we... to remember to check. I need to remember to have a little, like, I need a little post-it. Check that you're it was so good. Like the first one, we did it on accident, and then we hadn't done it again. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't done it again. Oh god! So let us know what you guys think of this episode. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. Thanks for hanging out with us, mm-hmm. and we'll see you next. Oh, I'm hitting my mic. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. See you guys later. Bye. Later. Bye. <laughs>